Just seven months into his term, President Biden is facing serious mounting questions about his leadership with a major hurricane slamming the Gulf Coast and U.S. forces racing to evacuate the remaining Americans from Afghanistan before tomorrow's withdrawal deadline. Critics are asking if the president is in over his head. Some are even comparing him to Jimmy Carter. William McGurn writing in the Wall Street Journal, quote, in the history books, the stink of our second Saigon will hang over Mr. Biden's legacy. But with more than three years left to his presidency, the idea that we may have another Jimmy Carter at the helm may be even scarier, especially if that is the read in Beijing, Moscow, and Tehran. Miranda, even CNN noticing that President Biden's facing a lot of questions on the economy. He's under 50 percent. He's tanked in his COVID numbers from the 60s to the 50s. And in Afghanistan, he's gone from 58 to just 34 percent approval. Well, it shows you just can't fool all of the people all of the time. And I think a lot of people have been fooled for a long time about Joe Biden. His image as being competent, particularly on foreign policy, an old hand, steady, all of that is out the window when you see what he's really like. Uh, I'm, in, in Great Britain, you are seeing headlines questioning his cognitive capability, especially since there was that footage of him seemingly falling asleep during a meeting in the, uh, with the uh, Israeli Prime Minister. Um, there just is a, a feeling that he's, he's out of it. He's not up to it. He's too old. He's um, not smart enough and he has not surrounded himself with very smart people. Um, we're looking at the border and we're looking at inflation and any number of crises coming up, and I don't think he's capable of handling them. No doubt he's not capable, Sean. And then in aggregate, you look at this, Gallup did a survey, only 23% of the country believes we're heading in the right direction. Among Democrats, it's just 39%. That's down from 63%. And this was before the Afghanistan debacle, before. So it's on every front we're looking. Yeah, I think in times of crisis, Americans want a leader who's strong and just been running for Senate, campaigning all across the state. One thing that I hear over and over and over again is who's really running the show? After we had lost 13 American lives, I think the American people were watching and wanting Joe Biden to express resolve and empathy, but we didn't get that. Instead, we got somebody who was weak, projected weakness, and then at the end said something, oh, I've got a list of people who I'm allowed to call on. Every American in the country saw that and wondered who's running the show you know say what you want about president trump he was always in charge he was clearly always the guy running the show and joe biden clearly he's not running the show and i don't think he's up to the task either He's not running the show. And Emily, two Democrat pollsters, Democrats in the Hill, writing one of which was Doug Schoen, writing that this is increasingly likely that Republicans will take over the House, the Senate, and even Joe Biden being a one-term president. These are Democrats writing this. That's exactly right, because out of likely 2022 voters in the four large areas where it matters, which is the economy, Afghanistan, the pandemic, and immigration, his numbers are plummeting, and these likely voters favor Republicans over Democrats. And I think aside from, from the specific numbers. It's the trends that matter. This president has plummeted 16 points in overall rating since April alone. And as Sean illustrated and Miranda, in all of these categories, the American people have watched a commander in chief fail without reassurance to the contrary. So the way that this trend is going absolutely in 2022, there will and should be an overhaul.